somebody cup and welcome to another episode for the Funk It Pod and for MMA Monday. And it's actually on a Monday. Maybe I stick to the to the MMA Monday, Monica. Now who knows? Let's see. Uh, the MMA hour, ten minutes. So we have to talk about a few things. MMA, obviously, interesting weekend again. If you're new to the program, I'm not reviewing the fights because there are so many great reviewers out there. Or mostly Morning Combat, for example. Ariel, if you want to hear some instigation. <laughs> I joke, maybe. Um, so there are many review shows out there. Bisping, who's really losing it a little bit, in my opinion. He's like just really, I know, maybe he's blinded by the YouTube money now because he's going all for the clicks these days, which is a bit annoying. Um, but there are so many shows out there, so I'm not just reviewing it. Um, there are also really good ones out there from not non-celebrities, like Jack Slack Podcast, for example, which is amazing. Uh, if you, if you want to hear opinions that are really great and interesting and elaborate um, on social media, you follow Kaposa at Grabaka hit underscore Hitman on, on Twitter. There are so many out there, so I don't review the fights unless it's one championship. I do review one championship fights because I simply think I live in Bangkok, so I go to basically all the events around here. Um, I've seen all lots of the fighters in the regional scene, so I can give some breakdowns there, but I'm not reviewing the UFC fights because there are so many out there. Uh, but I do give my take on like how the media is handling certain issues, things, and how well the fighters or like personalities or whatever are using the media. So... Having said, let's just jump right into the UFC 283 aftermath and also um, then after this a breakdown of the first one Friday fight um, from Lumpini Stadium. So one championship now in addition to their pay-per-views, like one on Prime and so on, they also now having Friday fights, that's the title that they gave them, from famous Lumpini Stadium here in Bangkok. Lumpini Stadium is like the the mecca of Muay Thai, so to speak. If you're a Lumpini Muay Thai champion, you're like the champion. And now they have like Friday fights in Lumpini Stadium, MMA as well as Muay Thai, mostly, mostly Muay Thai, I would say, at least the first event now. And I'll break this down in just a second, at least the, the, the two main fights. But let's start with the UFC because, well, props where props are due, right? So Glover Teixeira re retiring. So while I'm not reviewing the fight, Congratulations to Glover Teixeira for a great career. Became champion very late in his career. Awesome. Tried to regain it one more time. Didn't work out. No problem. Legend of the game. Obrigado. Well done. Fantastic. The way the UFC treated him, or like in, in the leader, was also great, I think. Um, sometimes they try to like, you know, hit, hit you on the way out. And this time they really like highlighted like his personality the way he he's a hard-working blue color kind of guy which was really nice and like at least in the ufc embedded which is nice i don't think glover himself is like a big media person he did lots of interviews though which was surprising and he was super chill and all the interviews he wasn't a bisping podcast he, he did he did every podcast out there i think um that was a bit surprising but hey i was chilling at the beach and so on there, like videos of him at the beach and so on um Maybe took it a bit too easy, I don't know. Maybe was just wanted to enjoy his last ride, like, as much as he could in his home country. Fair enough. So no, nothing much to say here, because he retired. They gave him his space. Good job. Jamal Hill, now we got to talk. So Jamal Hill, congratulations on becoming a champion. Very emotional. Fantastic. Today, when I opened Twitter, I saw lots of people... And yeah, you never know who those who they are, right? Hating on Jamal Hill for his stance on women. And I was like, hmm, I wasn't aware of that. Um, let me check. So I tried to figure out like, what did he do so that everyone's hating on him? And I saw that he was kind of like defending Dana White from from this this the slap situation, right? Which is not a good thing to do. I completely agree. But you can also see how social media just jumps on. And he didn't say Dana White was right. He just said, he said something along those, those lines on Twitter, like, no one should be slapping anyone. If you slap someone, you have to live with the repercussions. That's what he said, kind of like. Um, he's like, if, what if women just slap guys and they expect us to take it, bra or something? Not a great stance, obviously. Um, should apologize for it, probably. It was, could have said, like, it was in the heat of the moment, I don't know. But um, 
suggesting that because of that, he's a terrible human being with a terrible stance on women. I'm not sure if that's like the connection to make, but social media is fast to jump to such conclusions, right? So what should he do? I mean, what, what could the UFC do? The UFC probably wants to sell that champion, right? So do another like embedded or like an embedded style, like a post showcase of like how he celebrates with his family, put something out on the YouTube channel, like how his wife welcomes him back home at the airport, how they hug and embrace and whatnot, things like this. Um, he should use his social media also like to maybe be more thoughtful on this. I think he should apologize for that or like at least say like, hey, you all like blew it out of proportion. I didn't mean, I, I just meant like, well, if someone gets struck, then well, then there, I don't know, emotions flying high, so just don't hit anyone or something like this. So he could, he could uh, like get back on this a little bit. I agree that obviously the stance or like the message wasn't great, but I also think just because of that, you might not want to jump to conclusion and saying like he's a terrible human being that hits women because that's probably not the case. And so that's what I'm just saying. Like those conclusions aren't always that sound, like a bit, bit too fast and you know how social media works. So I think he needs to be a bit more proactive there. Okay. That was Jamal Hill, but congratulations on, on being the champion. Uh, Komain, um, Brent Moreno, Davis and Figueredo, finally it's over. <laughs> They're going to fight until they're 65 or 70 in retirement <laughs> homes. Like, like, like I'm going to get you. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Brent Moreno is very media friendly anyways. Um, he does the Spanish um, commentary or broadcasting at times, I believe. So... Uh, He's very good at it anyways. He's like the likable guy, the guy that collects Lego and so on. So um, he, he's doing, he's on the media all the time anyways. Great job. The UFC shoves it down our thoughts that he's like the first Mexican champ, which is great because deservedly so. Like if I would be the first whatever champ, I would be like, hey, I'm the first. So um, yeah, I think Brent Moreno is doing like a good job. He's always also always on all the podcasts and the programs and so on. So good job there. Davis and Figueredo, I think, could benefit from like now being a bit more I don't know, outgoing. He's an outgoing personality, but like proactive in his, in, his, in his media, especially social media approach. Now that he goes into a new weight class, he's got to be like, I'm here. <laughs> be, you know what, right? So like announce himself, um, maybe have like some help from, from Triple C if they still talk to each other. I'm not sure if, if there was like bad blood when they split or not. Uh, like some some like I'm dropping like right in hot into the division so I think he needs a bit more a bit more fanfare like what they did with him when he was a champion you know, just continue to like push him into the into the next division even though there are lots of people in there lots of contenders but you wanna you wanna utilize the the star power that's left from Davis and Figueredo right so gotta, gotta push I think um Otherwise, I think all the highlights were great. Of course, the, all the knockouts, the vicious knockouts are going like, to be played over and over again. Johnny Walker <laughs> made use of his mic time. <laughs> so did uh, Gilbert Burns. I'm not sure if calling out Colby Covington is the smartest thing, but he probably knows better. I don't know how, when Colby can come back or if he's going to come back or if he's going to have to keep acting injured or something to get the money from, from the court or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I think they all did a, did a decent job this time around on a microphone. Um, maybe Manny Moicano blazed the way for other Brazilians that are now more confident on the mic and like calling out other others. Or maybe it's really like this, because Gilbert lives in the US, right? Glover does, of course, um, but I mean, he didn't say anything, but um, the other, who, uh, Johnny Walker from I in Ireland, and, and I don't know if like the others also live in the US or something, but you see that they're more confident. So if your English skills are just better, I'm proving you're more confident, you're calling your shots more more elaborately, which is great. So um, for any foreign fighter, right, it makes sense to, to get better in English. Like, yes, America is not the center of the world, but in the, if you're in the UFC, it kind of is. So let's, let's, like, let's utilize it as much as, as you can. I think this time around, most of them did it quite well. So nothing much to complain about here. I'll probably complain about it in the next MMA hour, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, once the program's now picked up on the results and then, then I, I, I'm gonna pick it apart like how they treated different fighters. Um, I liked, I, well, I just listened to the Morning Combat guys a little bit to, uh, to Luke Thomas and he gave like props to Glover, um, which was nice to hear. 
Um, he also gave props to, 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 to Moreno and all the other winners. So it was nice to so, so far, so good. But, well, you know, Monday, so tomorrow, um, Tuesday here in Bangkok, Monday for, for the people in the U.S., um, the other show went live, the, the, the fake MMA Monday, the MMA hour, <laughs> fake MMA hour. Um, so let's see what, what happens there. Okay. Um, so, this, so, so far, so good. Um, they have some viral knockouts. Great. I think they're all going to utilize this. Awesome. Let's move, let, let's move on. I think nothing, no real fallout after that, like no Conor McGregor tweeting angrily or anything, or no, no, no weird call outs or anything. Um, Bilal was like on, on social media, a bit, a bit like, oh, no, I really don't like the guy. Yeah, good. Who cares? Like, I let, Bilal was on a Joe Rogan experience, like, right? And he said some interesting stuff, but he's also just like, always like, has like this, he complains in like the, like he's, he's not saying like, he's not complaining actively, but it's like this, this passive complaining all the time. Like he says something interesting and then like hits, adds a complaint at the end of the sentence. Or da, 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 and then it's like complaining like, dude, just leave the complaints out and then people just gonna see like hey okay you're just gonna hug everybody to death but if it works it works i mean khabib made it work so great keep doing what you're doing um but stop the complaints all the time that's a, it's a bit it's a bit like yeah and if it's true that that he's not ducking but he just didn't accept the gilbert burns fight then you can complain about someone calling you out right so hmm. okay Gilbert Burns su su suggested um, him versus Colby uh, via tough. How much would he get for that? Because he, he posted like then also like the, the money bags. Is it really still that much worth? Because I mean, I, I, I haven't watched tough in like ever. So I don't know if it's still like a, this much, this big of a deal in the US. You let me know. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, w I would like to see the fight, obviously. It's just like I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if that, that's going to happen in the in the near future because Gilbert said he wants to f fight again um, soon um, so I probably Gilbert versus Bilal more more I don't know more in the, in the cards but let's see that's enough for the UFC I think because it was like a, a cool event a nice event but no crazy fallout after the event I think um, oh well the last thing Anthony Smith missed weight as the replacement I mean he wasn't needed but yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing what he says on the podcast I knew that the guys were fighting anyway, so I was like, I don't have to cut the last few pounds. <laughs> let's see. Let's see about this, Anthony Smith. Let's see about this. He's hating on people that, that miss weight all the time, so let's let's see. Okay, moving on. One championship. Friday fights was pretty cool. Um, lots of probably fighters that you don't know, so I'm not going like, to go through all the fights now. But the, there was like two shows in one, basically. Um, and the main event of the first part of the show was a Muay Thai fight between Sexan, the, the, the Thai fighter, and Tyler, Tyler, I think, Harrison, um, from Australia, nicknamed John Wayne Noy. Noy is a Thai word for little, small. So it's basically the small John Wayne. So this, the, the, the small John Wayne par. So... I mean, if you're from Australia, you have to com probably be compared to John Wayne Parr, especially if you're in Thailand, who, because Thailand loved John Wayne Parr. Um, Harrison was way taller than Saxon, um, way younger, I think so too, um, uh, le less experienced, but they put on a show, like Harrison tried, like he just was trying to march forward and Saxon was trying to pick him apart and like moved into the pocket and just like hit him with some nice, nice clean uppercuts in between and it was just, it was a fantastic fantastic fight and Harrison but Harrison was not deterred he was just he kept throwing all three rounds um, Saxon got the decision in the end um, Harrison acted surprised for a second but it, I don't think it was a, it was it was a surprise a it's in Thailand so in getting the, the decision over a Thai fighter is not that easy but also Saxon deserved to win like he he was hitting the, the cleaner shots more heavy the heavier shots and just more of them, I think. Um, so, but it was like still a great fight. So it was not that he was outclassed, Harrison. It was just like Saxon etched it out, I think. But great showing from Harrison. Like great coming out um, from Harrison there. He's going to be on, on lots of future cards for, for one championship, I'm sure. Because it was a fantastic fight. It was, it was really good. Yeah, really great. Saxon also, but we all know Saxon. Like he's a very, very accomplished in Thailand. Um, he got the 50,000 baht bonus also afterwards. I think Harrison should have gotten a bonus too. Like, should be fight of the night, not just 
the winner, but should be like a fight of the night kind of thing, in, in, in my opinion. That was a fantastic fight, and the crowd went nuts. If you haven't watched it, it's it's, it's, it's on YouTube right now. Um, check it out, Saxons versus, um, I think, Tyler, Taylor Harrison from Australia. The crowd went nuts. The crowd was so noisy. It was awesome because usually you don't hear that in the, in the one events because usually one championship is in an impact arena when they're in Bangkok and like the big arenas when they're here in Southeast Asia. And sometimes it feels like they, they pump the noise in. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And but that doesn't feel, I don't know, it feel, doesn't feel like that organic and like big, 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 like those big arenas. But like Lumpini Stadium is, is a stadium, but it's not huge as big as like an impact arena here. Um, and the crowd was just, the crowd noise was just so loud. It was fantastic. And they're a very educated Muay Thai crowd. So when there are Muay Thai fights, they, they know what they're looking for, of course. And they, they just, with every kick, they go, oh, it was amazing. It was fantastic. Like Even like teeps, like like front kicks, which, which aren't that crazy, right? They're like, oh, it was awesome. It was a really, really great crowd. So it was fantastic. Then the second main event of the second part of the show afterwards, in the second part of the show, the second main event was just, that was, that was completely nuts, <laughs> which was Nong Oga Kayang Hadao, like a, a living legend in Muay Thai, the one um, Muay Thai champion of the weight class, I forgot which one it is. Um, and he was facing Alverdi Ramasanov, the previous champion in one championship Alvedi Ramasanov also trains um, he's from Russia but he trains here in Thailand like very f well known in the Muay Thai scene here he trains in Padaya for, with Venom training camp yeah Venom I know uh, so he trains with Venom training camp and and the weigh-ins the day before like the face-offs he was like making like this, this, this shooting gesture like I'm gonna kill you to Nong O and in Thailand I mean, yeah, it's it's controversial anyways, but in Thailand, this is like super impolite. Like when you face off, you're going to be polite, right? You're going to, you why each other? You're like, yeah, let's do it tomorrow. No hostilities usually. So being like this is like a no-go here in Thailand. And so then the fight starts and Nong O does his thing, um, like landing better shots. Ramasanov is hanging in there in the first round. I think Nong O had it. Closish fight. Um, but Nong O with like the better shot. Like Ramasanov was, was throwing some kicks, some teeps, and his corner was like, yay, celebrating like every every everything that he landed. But Nong O landed better. So I Nong O was up, I think. I second round I would also have given to Nong O just for the because it's in Thailand. <laughs> and I think he had like more the the heavier shots, I think. But you could maybe argue that, that Ramasanov like in the la found his groove better and also landed some good shots there. Um, so you could have maybe given it to Ramasanov. Um, but that, that's usually like when when you have like a close round with Nong O fighting, like I'm not sure if Nong O took this one. Maybe he lost this round. Then usually Nong O is like he knows the two and he comes out and he just like demolishes uh, his opponent. And that's exactly what happened. Round three starts and Nong O just comes out and just just kills Ramasanov, like just pushes forward, throws all the combinations, and <laughs> Ramasanov was just like, what is happening? And so Nongo took him out there, uh, I think at like two minutes something in, in, in that, that round, in the third round, uh, TKO. And I think a body shot dropped him, and he could just couldn't get up in time. Like he was just sitting on the floor, like I, 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 I can't get up, and so stop it. And then Nong O was just like one, and then he's like pointing and shooting at Rama Sandov like a few times. Um, for a tie to do that, it really you really need to have pissed him off. Like you can see that Nong O was not happy, so he's like. <laughs> um, after that, Rama Sandov came to went to the corner of Nong O. Maybe he apologized, or maybe he said, they hugged it out afterwards. We don't know what they said, but they hugged it out afterwards. So, yay, nice that they. They, con they they at the end made up um, in this regard, but in the beginning, like Nongo was mad about this behavior and the way and so in the face of so. If you're about to fight in Thailand, let this be a lesson. Um, no, uh, Tyler Harrison, for example, he also had like guns, like toy guns with him because John Wayne, right? John Wayne Noy, but in a cowboy head, but in a in a funny manner. He's like pew pew, like yay, not like I'm gonna kill you. Um, so yeah. That that's not how Thailand works. So just as an FYI, be be aware of this if you're planning to fight here. Over and the noise, the crowd noise here was so loud. 
that for a moment you couldn't hear the commentary. You 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 hear they yeah, they were saying something, but you couldn't hear what they were saying for just a moment. So this was amazing. So this one fight, I think one, I know if they planned it exactly like this, but I think they just they just struck. Is it struck gold here? Yeah, I think it's the same, right? I think they struck gold with this one. This is, if they keep doing this from Lumpini Stadium, it's going to be amazing. There are lots of like. Fight nights now, fight events here in, in in Bangkok right now, also from Lumpini Stadium. They're like there are lots of promotions are trying to make it work, like like being making it like a bit more upper class, like more like TV friendly. But it hasn't really worked out so far. And I think if one keeps doing that, they probably are gonna be the ones that are really gonna do it. Um, Chatri, the, the CEO of One, sometimes a bit controversial, but he also made a speech in between, like how he thanked everybody involved. He, it's in Thailand, you have to thank like everyone. Um, but he seemed a bit like emotional, like in a, in a good way. Like he's like, oh man, I can't believe we're actually at Lumpini Stadium because it just means so much to be in Lumpini Stadium. All right. Having that said, the last thing. Um, so that's that's was the one. The one event was fantastic. So if there are one fight night, Friday fights again, check it out. Especially if you're into stand up. They had some MMA fights on there, but it was mostly the Muay Thai fights. Even the even the MMA fights didn't really hit the ground because I don't know if you you're in Lumpini Stadium you just don't go for the takedown you're like I'm here in Lumpini I have to stay uh, keep it standing. Um, last thing I forgot earlier with the UFC um, that that uh, Ukrainian guy who took out Shogun Shogun Rua and, and Shogun uh, retired of course mad props to Shogun because he's a legend. Then he did like this dance where he shot Shogun at the end um, to celebrate like the f a Fortnite dance. That's gonna bite him in the ass like. In the moment, people already hating on him and like, how can you be so like a shooting thing and so violent and whatever? And especially if you're from Ukraine, um, maybe they didn't realize it's, it's a Fortnite dance, but also doing that Fortnite dance in that moment against the legend who's retiring. If you're from Ukraine, might not be the best thing to do. So some media awareness, I think, would be beneficial to fighters. So if you have fighters out there who want some media training or something shout out we're gonna hook you up because that's just terrible if things, if things like this happen or if you like need some cross-cultural training before you're heading to thailand <laughs> hook a, or like shoot us a line we're gonna hook you up there too okay so okay that's it for this this today's mma 20 minutes mma hour mma monday whatever we're gonna call it let me know your thoughts on on the events on how the media handle all those things um I think it was a great weekend of fights. I can't wait for the next one. Until then, stay safe, take care. Don't forget to keep your guard up. Sorry, Cap. Oh, no, oh.